And it was just the most surreal experience having this show and these characters in my head and then looking over and seeing Mia, <laughs> Cameron and Alison running towards me. The idea for Everything Now came about when I was 18 and I contributed an essay to a book on mental health. And I wrote an essay on uh, teenage mental health and eating disorders. I was really, really proud of that piece of writing, but I'm not naturally a prose writer. And so I wanted to kind of build on the foundation of that essay, but find a way to dramatize it. That is how the idea for the pilot came about and where the character of Mia initially came from. And yeah, so the pilot was very much kind of just me alone in my room. And then uh, once it was picked up by Left Bank and then by Netflix, it kind of sort of spiraled a bit and we brought in other writers and had a couple of writers rooms and the world really broadened and other characters were introduced and fleshed out. Well, apart from obviously thinking how on earth is this 19 year old first time writer so talented, I just thought it was so authentic and brave and funny and just a really unique um, tone. And it spoke to me on a personal level, I just I just thought it really kind of cut to the core of what that experience is like and something that, that I've experienced in my own life with disordered eating and runs in my family and I felt very connected to, but I just thought that it was done with such wit and humor and heart and kind of British, yeah, self-deprecating gallows humor. And I think that was something that just really stood out to me as, as a way to tackle something that's that's very heavy and subject matter a big part of this has to come from you knowing your own body respecting the recovery plan i think the the biggest challenge was also the you know the, the biggest joy and opportunity which was getting the essence and getting the tone that felt very unique to ripley's voice to translate to, to screen and that was something that every step of the way was it you know was was a challenge and um, and a joy in finding those people that could do that and translate it. So um, first and foremost was obviously finding our director, our lead director, Melissa um, Alyssa McClelland, who is fantastic and kind of really just captured the tone in her deck. And we just felt like you know she she'd captured what Ripley was writing um, to you know casting to the other writers being able to kind of replicate that tone to costume and the look you know the look of the show so every element um, the music and the way that, that the show was kind of edited um, so I think that would be the biggest challenge is just the, yeah it was so unique and it was just making sure that we felt that that had been captured on screen. Ooh, finding the cast it was such a surreal process it didn't really occur to me until we started casting but when you kind of go into a project and put your whole kind of heart and soul into it and into the characters you're going to have ridiculously high expectations when it comes to the people who are going to be kind of taking them out of your hands and they're going to be you know putting their own spin on them and i was very very lucky in that um my expectations were so 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 surpassed by the cast they are absolutely bloody magnificent i think i can i can remember like each of the kind of core casts audition tapes and they all just brought something they each brought something to every character that i never would have thought to write myself. I remember watching them being like, oh my god, I didn't realise that Becca was so fierce or that Will was so warm or that Cameron was so funny and um, you know, why am I rooting for Alison all of a sudden? And and then there was Sophie, who we all knew that finding Mia was going to be the hardest to cast and was going to be quite emotional for me and for a lot of people. Um, just because it's such a, it's such a, it's so hard to portray kind of the duality of that character because she's sort of so kind of sweet and emphatic and lovely, but has this really, really quite dark inner monologue going on. And so to get an actor who can portray both of those at the same time was no small feat. And then Sophie came along and just absolutely blew us all away. She was just so, it's so annoying to hear about someone as gorgeous as Sophie is but she's just the nicest person in the world she's so sweet she's so so smart and like just you know put her whole heart and soul into playing that character and yeah we couldn't have asked for a better cast I understand what I need to do now so I can go back to school and see my friends and just be normal again Mia how are you you know how it is no I don't I've never been to a mental hospital 
These are the greatest people of all time. Score! So my favourite moment on set was probably, it's a bit cheap, but day one, I think, we shot the scene where she's come back to school, basically from having the seven months away where she's been treated for her eating disorder. And I think as much as, you know, we all did our very best and I had an incredible casting director, uh, Carmel, and we loved all the individual actors that we, we chose for the friends, the friendship group, and obviously Sophie, who plays Mia. There's that kind of magic chemistry that you never really know. You do chemistry tests, of course, and you, you know, you hope that it's going to work. But until you see them all together in situ, you never really know. And I think seeing them all kind of reunite um, as a group of friends and banter and, and be together on the bus, even like the ad lib stuff that was, you know, in between takes was just, we were just crying laughing. Um, and that's when I just thought, yeah, these are, these are our people. These are our group. This is, this is cheating a bit because it's actually not from on set. It's from the first read through or first day kind of meeting all the cast and having them all in the same room. Um, I was so, so, so nervous. I think I was outside the read through kind of quietly going to pieces. <laughs> And then I hear someone yell, Ripley! And from around the corner, I see Neve, Harry and Sophie kind of running towards me. And it was just the most surreal experience kind of having this show and these characters in my head and then looking over and seeing Mia, <laughs> Cameron and Alison running towards me. It was just so, so exciting and overwhelming to see them. And it was a real moment of like, oh, there's, you know, this can't go wrong. It, these characters are in their hands. And yeah, they won't, they won't steer us wrong. Bex. What are you saying? You're mates with Jonah. He has the good weed. There are multiple weeds. What do I hope people take away from the series? If I can be a bit greedy, I'd probably say there's two things that I'd hope they take away. And the first is have a better understanding of eating disorders um, and disordered eating more generally. I think that this is definitely not an educational piece. Um, it's fun and it's coming of age and there's lots of different elements, but I think we wanted to dispel a lot of myths around anorexia in particular but more broadly eating disorders and I hope that people will get a better understanding of complexity and, and the fact that it's an internal brain <laughs> disorder and it, it's not just about social media or about looking good or looking thin it, it's much more complex than that and then secondly I think I'd love people to feel less alone more connected give themselves and each other a bit less of a hard time. Um, the, the biggest kind of journey that, that Mia has coming out is realizing that everyone else hasn't got it together like she thinks they have and everybody's given themselves a hard time, which obviously we do throughout our lives, but particularly in teenage years. So yeah, um, being a bit kinder and feeling more connected. I think that, honestly, the, the main thing I hope they, the main thing I hope they take away is a lot of fun and a lot of um, appreciation for what being a teenager can be and what, you know, having these experiences with your friends can be. And I suppose just the knowledge that, just know knowing how important it is to listen and to um, lean on your friends when you're not ready to hold yourself up just yet.